Hi, I'm here with Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI. Uh, today, we are very excited to announce a strategic partnership with OpenAI, and I have thought it'll be a great chance for us to chat about uh, OpenAI and your uh, progress towards this generalized uh, learning in AGI. Uh, so, Sam, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe we can start right uh, with OpenAI and its mission yeah. um, and uh, the opportunity. So our mission is to develop artificial general intelligence, uh, broad AI systems that can do a lot of tasks at superhuman level, and then figure out how to deploy those systems in the way that it most benefits the world. Uh, I think this will be the most important technological development in human history. Uh, when we have computers that can really think and learn, uh, that's going to be transformative, and we want to figure out how to be on the, the leading edge of that and figure out how to have the maximum positive impact with it. That's right, scale from today's sort of narrow domains of uh, AI yeah. to really a generalized learning. You know, today what we have are sort of systems that are maybe like one small region of the brain that can do one task well. And as we scale these systems up and up and up, and as we make algorithmic innovations and figure out better training environments, uh, we're already starting to see this. We get systems that are quite general in their power. And then, of course, Central to this partnership is uh, really your ambition around this generalized uh, AI as well as the supercomputer in some yes. sense that's required. And yes. you've been working with Azure in the past. Uh, we've you know, shared with you our roadmap. You know, talk about sort of the nature of uh, AI itself becoming much more compute bound and the need for computational power for you know, pursuit of your mission. So we started back with Azure in 2016. One of the things that we've learned since then is, uh, and this is a reason for great optimism, is that uh, increasing the size of the largest models we can train uh, keeps letting us solve seemingly impossible tasks. So we have been incredibly hungry for larger and larger neural networks that we can train faster and faster. As we started to really learn this and really believe it, uh, that this 8x increase per year for the last seven years, and wanted to make sure we keep that curve going, right. uh, we got to see you know everybody's plans. We met all the custom chip companies, and uh, yeah, We've seen the Azure roadmap. We think we're going to keep getting that 8x. And our belief is that by far, um, Azure will have the best solution for training these super, super large models. Um, and we're thankful you guys are willing to take some input from us and work together. And yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that both of our organizations care deeply about is AI safety. Yes. Um, and so how, how do you, you at OpenAI thinking about this? So I think technology, the technology industry in the last few years has not done a good enough job about thinking ahead of time about the impact that their work is going to have. And so we want to make sure uh, is that the systems that we build are safe, they're understandable, uh, and most importantly, uh, the benefits of it are broadly shared. We always talk about how do we how we want to democratize AI. To us, it's all about how can AI be that new source of productivity and surplus creation all around the world. There are a lot of reasons I'm excited about this partnership, but at the top of the list is how you think about what it really means to be a technology platform and, and democratizing access. We are very, very excited about this roadmap I had. And so I'm optimistic, both in terms of our ability to build the supercomputer and the AGI on top of it. But most importantly, what excites me is the opportunity the two organizations have because of the core mission we share uh, to have that broad impact where we truly democratize access to a AI and AGI uh, to every organization out there to be able to really take advantage of it. So thank you very much, Sam. It's great to have you. you thank know, you for the partnership. Partner. Thanks. You famously said when you were younger there were five problems that you thought were most important for you to work on. Mm -hmm. um, if you were 22 today, what would the five problems that you would think about working on be? Um, well, first of all, I, th I think um, if, if somebody is doing something that is useful to the, the rest of society, I think that's a good thing. Like, it doesn't have to change the world. Like, you know, um, if you're doing something that has high value to, to people, um, and, and frankly, even if it's something, if it's like um, just a little game, um, or you know the some improvement in photo sharing or something. If it if it has if it has a small amount of of good uh, for a large number of people, um, that's I mean I think that's that's fine. Like stuff doesn't need to be changed the world just to be good. Um, uh, but it, you know in terms of things that I think are most likely to affect the the future of humanity, I think. Um, AI is probably the single biggest item in the near term that's likely to affect uh, humanity. So it's very important that we have the advent of AI uh, in a good way. That that uh, is something that um, if you if you could look into the crystal ball and, and see the future, you would you would like that outcome. Um, 
because it is something that could go um, could go wrong, um, as we've talked about many times. Um, and so we really need to make sure it goes right. Um, that's that's I think AI work, working on AI and making sure it's a great future. That's that's the most important thing I think right now. Um, the most pressing item. So uh, then um, obviously anything to do with with genetics. Um, if you can actually solve um, genetic diseases, um, if you can um, prevent dementia um, or Alzheimer's or something like that, that um, with genetic reprogramming, that would be wonderful. So I think this uh, genetics it might be the sort of second most important item. I, I think um, having a high bandwidth interface to the, the brain, like. Um, we're currently bandwidth limited. We, we, we have a digital tertiary self uh, in the form of our email, our computers, phones, applications. Uh, we're effectively superhuman, um, but we are extremely bandwidth constrained in that interface between the cortex and your sort of uh, that, that tertiary digital form of yourself. And um, helping solve that uh, bandwidth constraint uh, would, would be, I think, very important for the future as well. I do think you want to work harder than most people think you should. And I think that if you do that, uh, you tend to benefit from it later. Life is super unfair. Sometimes you also just get unlucky. Uh, and, and so all you can do is kind of maximize chances there. But I do think that working hard early in your career to get the leverage and the compounding effects is underrated and one of the most valuable pieces of advice that I never got. Uh, yeah, I think people have terrible risk calculus in general. Um, even people who try to be really good about this are bad at it. Um, the answer. I think is almost always uh, a you're wrong about what is risky and what is not risky, and b uh, most people don't take enough risk, especially early in your career. Being un young and unknown and poor, um, that is actually a great gift in terms of the amount of risk you can take, um, and I think people don't capitalize on that enough. So if you really believe in something and there's an idea that you're super passionate about, that's a great risk to take, and if you don't take that risk, I think. You have a very high chance that you end up regretting that. One really important thing to strive for uh, in, in your career is to be a doer, not a talker. And th the reason that people don't do stuff, one is it's hard and two is it's risky. Uh, and I think it's this combination of work and risk. I think history belongs to the doers. And I think you should take a risk, actually do something. This was one of the other things I learned um, that I wish I had gotten advice on early in my career. Uh, is ask for what you want. And I think you see a lot of entrepreneurs shoot themselves in the foot. Um, and they're just not aggressive enough. Uh, and I think you being willing to ask for what you want and, and be somewhat aggressive are really important characteristics.